This meeting is a unique meeting and a very important meeting because it's solely focused on neural interface technology and applications. Um, there are many meetings where work like this is discussed, but this is one meeting devoted exclusively to this technology. And basically everybody who works in this field attends this meeting. This is probably the, the best meeting that I go to. Uh, and I think that the vast majority of people here actually feel the same way. It's so important and critical because it's the only event that I'm really aware of where people are willing and able to honestly discuss their problems and challenges. The meeting serves another important role by having people who are working in this field, most of the people who are working in this field, gather together and to see what is the state of the art in other people's laboratories. Well, I think in the, in the next five to ten years what we're going to see is a translation of some of the really exciting science that we heard about at this meeting into new clinical applications of electrical stimulation. And a cu couple of things that I heard about at this meeting that I'm really excited about, one is uh, treatment of chronic pain using electrical stimulation, which has been around for about 40 years, but it hasn't advanced in the past 40 years, and now, due to some new science and new understanding, there are new opportunities to greatly advance that therapy. As the neural interface technology has matured, um, we are relying more and more on uh, commercial vendors to help produce the devices that will actually be implanted in our subjects for scientific experimentation, and ultimately these companies will be actually producing the devices that will be the clinical devices that will be implanted in patients in, to take care of uh, pathological conditions of the nervous system. I'm here with GTEC from Austria and we provide solutions for EEG and BCI or brain computer interfaces uh, for researchers and clinicians. BCI record brain waves and then interpret them and make the computer or robot do something based on the interpretation of brainwaves. The goal of BCI is to allow patients who are locked in and have no way to communicate with the outside world to do so and eventually to allow those who are locked in to function in the world as normally as possible. We make tools that allow these amazing neuroscientists to do the work that they do, which is extracting the brain signals from the different experiments that they're doing, the animals that they're working on, be able to translate those signals into meaningful data. Our goals at BlackRock are to continue to provide this enabling technology to really push this field forward and enable this fascinating research in the, the many areas that are being explored today, such as movement, prosthetic devices for people that are paralyzed, retinal prosthetic devices for, for blind people, and many other different types of products and technologies that can help solve some of the neurological disorders that are going on today. This kind of exposure, uh, I think, makes researchers realize that they may, might have to run just a little bit faster than they were planning on running in order to keep up with, what other with progress in other people's laboratories. So the meeting really is a very uh, effective way of moving the technology forward. If we think about things in the next 10 to 20 years, uh, we heard about a new technology at this meeting called optogenetics. And this is a light-sensitive channel which can be put into nerve cells. And then when you flash a light on those nerve cells, you can either make them fire, become excited, or stop them from firing, turn them off. And that's a very exciting technology. What we're going to use it for, it's not quite clear. But I think we'll see some new devices in the next 10 to 20 years using optogenetics. Bringing students into this environment, the students themselves get a chance to see really what is the state of the art in this technology. Um, undergraduate students can make decisions as to who they might want to work with, laboratories they might want to associate with, because it's all being sort of displayed to them like a gourmet meal. And they can nibble a little bit at this food, a little bit at that food, they can talk to scientists here, scientists there, and they get a sense of uh, this is really where, what I want to do and this is where I really want to do it. I chose to go into neural engineering after my grandfather suffered from a series of strokes that left him completely paralyzed and unable to speak. And I thought to myself, wouldn't it be wonderful if there was a way to reconnect my grandfather with the outside world?
perspective. In fact, I've told the students that this is their first meeting, that they're going to be disappointed in everything that comes after this because the Neural Interfaces Conference is just such a well-attended and uh, organized meeting. Um, at this conference, I've been learning a lot about deep brain stimulators, which are devices that can be used to treat Parkinson's disease, essential tremor, and other conditions. I've learned about treatments for depression and obesity that are based on interfacing with the nervous system. And I've been able to interact with a lot of my peers in the neural prosthetics group, particularly visual prostheses. So that's where we can stimulate the brain with little microchips developed at the University of Utah, which may eventually allow patients to see again. The 40th uh, Neural Interface Conference, which was held in the Salt Palace here in Salt Lake City, has been, I think, a great success. I've heard from a number of the participants that this was an outstanding meeting, that they really enjoyed the city and the state and the venue very much. So I believe this was a, a wonderful opportunity for the University of Utah and the Brain Institute to participate and work together to create, I think, a world-class meeting.